Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. You know, I've explained before that I am a big fan of Greek food. So I made Spanakopita for dinner. I had guests, and we all enjoyed it. So I thought I would show you how I make it before we start cooking. I'd love it if you'd give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and click the little bell so that you'll get a notice when I post new videos. Now let's get cooking. So warning, warning, warning. There's a lot of ingredients to go through. I'm going to list them in the info section so you don't have to memorize it all. I have about two pounds of fresh spinach. You can use frozen spinach, by the way. Uh, you just want to have the equivalent of two pounds, which is something like four packs. We'll chop it up a little bit, but first I'm going to wash it like three times. This is cottage cheese. You can use ricotta, a cup. This is labneh. If you're not familiar with labneh, it is Greek yogurt strained until it's the consistency of a spreadable cheese. I have a leek here. You can use green onions or a regular onion. I have feta cheese here. We're going to use about a cup of that. There was parsley over there that I showed you, fresh parsley. This is phyllo dough, surprisingly hard to find. It comes in a one pound package. You're going to use half of it. This is dill. Fresh dill would be better. I didn't have fresh dill. That's dill weed. That's garlic powder. You can also use fresh garlic. I'm going to use four eggs and lots and lots of olive oil. And you can substitute most things, but not that. I'm starting out with a four quart Dutch oven. And I'm going to put a couple, three tablespoons full of olive oil in that. I really do suggest you start with a fairly big pan because while the spinach is going to shrink up to almost nothing, when you start out, it has a lot of volume. So it's just easier on you and less mess if you start out with a big pot. So I have my heat on medium low and I'm going to add two cups of the chopped leeks. This was one leek. You can use chopped green onions. You can use uh, one large regular onion. You can use any combination of those things. You just want about one and a half to two cups of those onion or onion-like products. I just particularly like leeks. I think leeks are so tasty and they don't make me cry when I cut them. I want to wilt these down, so I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of salt. A word about salt. There is a variety of cheeses you can use for this dish, and some of them are pretty salty. So, if you were to use keflotiri or uh, grated parmesan, then you would cut back on your salt. You just have to know the cheese you're using. I'm using cheeses that are not particularly salty, so I'm going to add some salt as I go along. So now I'm going to add uh, some garlic powder. Fresh garlic would probably be better. I don't have any, but garlic powder is just fine. And that was a half a teaspoonful. And then I'm going to add some dill weed. This is dried dill weed. And I know it looks to you like I'm just putting it in there, but I'm actually putting in about two tablespoons full of the dill weed. If you have fresh dill, which would be wonderful, you're going to add a little bit more fresh dill, probably twice that much. Uh, I just usually add one package when I have it, and if I'm growing it outside, I just chop up a good handful. You can tell this is not an exact science. Depends on how much you like dill, but a lot of the flavor depends on dill. And dried dill weed is just fine. So I'm going to stir that and let it cook together for maybe three minutes. Uh, just enough time for the leeks to start wilting. And I think I need to add a little more olive oil here before I add the spinach. Because it's almost dry in there. Just a quick word. The reason I said you could substitute a lot of things but not the olive oil. It, it just... 
Something about the olive oil, the flavor of it, is necessary for this dish. And if you use something else, it just doesn't taste right. So I started adding the spinach. And I'm chopping it as I go, so I'm going to add it in stages. The spinach is going to cook down a lot. And if you can see, this is just a really rough chop. As a matter of fact, one of the packages I had was baby spinach and some of it didn't get chopped at all. Um, you don't really have to chop it, but if you chop it, it's a little bit easier to mix into the cheese mixture uh, when we combine all our ingredients. So that's all of my spinach chopped up in the four quart Dutch oven, and I'm gonna add another half teaspoonful of salt that will help it wilt down, and then I'm gonna put a lid on it. Uh, so that it'll sort of steam as the liquid starts to let go, then having the lid on it will steam your spinach. And this only takes about five minutes or so on a medium-low heat. And oops, I almost forgot. I've got about two cups of chopped up parsley here that needs to be steamed with all of this. And just a word about the parsley. I had bought this a bunch of parsley from Kroger. It looked beautiful when I started to use it. I had to wash it four times to get the grit off of it. The water in the first two washes was just filthy. And so I washed and washed and washed until the water ran clear. I, I tell you that because it's a warning. Just because you buy something in a nice package at the grocery store does not mean it's clean. Even the spinach had to be washed three times so just a word to the wise so while the spinach is steaming and cooking we're going to get the cheese egg mixture ready i've broken four eggs in here and i'm going to whisk them just a little bit just a note here yes i started with too small a bowl i'm aware that the bowl is too small you don't need to send me a nasty message about it next time i'll use a bigger bowl so I'm mixing the eggs up. We don't have to beat them until they're creamy. We just want to mix them up. And then we're going to start adding our cheese. Now, I'll give you a couple of notes about cheese to use in Spanakopita. You always want to use feta cheese. But I'm starting here with cottage cheese. And that's a replacement for ricotta. So if you don't find ricotta in your store, you don't find a good grade of ricotta, you can use cottage cheese. It works just the same. You kind of want to drain it a little bit. You don't want any extra liquid in there. Then I'm going to add the labneh. And this is, um, it's, it's actually yogurt and it's been strained. You can see the consistency I strain it to. I generally make my own Greek strained yogurt. I've got a video on how to do that. Saves you a lot of money. I eat a good bit of yogurt. But I also cook with a lot of cheese. And in this dish, this labneh works just wonderful. Now, the other thing that's good with the labneh is to put a tablespoonful of some nice preserves. I use sugar-free sugar preserves and mix it all together and spread it on bread, and add some peanut butter. That's the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich you will ever make. So I have made these in four ounce containers, so I'm adding a cup of labneh. You can use another kind of cheese. You can use keflo grieri. I'm sorry, I have a little trouble saying that, which is a Greek cheese that costs about $20 a pound. And, um, I made this so it's cheaper and it's as good and it's good uh, you could also use a Havarti you could use a Gouda you can use the Keflotiri which is very very salty it's a Greek cheese and I'm not going to use it you could also use cream cheese sorry it's stuck and I do have too small a bowl but I'm not trying to whip this. I just want to get it mixed in well together. Then I'm going to add the feta. And you do want to use feta. And, and get a good grade of feta. And 
this is a 12 ounce package so I'm just going to put in about 8 ounces so total we've got 3 cups of cheese in this dish and you can vary those cheeses and the cheese you choose is going to impact the amount of salt you need so you want to taste the spinach mixture but you're not going to taste this because it's got raw eggs in it so you should taste your cheeses before you start so that you know uh, what kind of salty what kind of saltiness you're going to have in your finished product i'm going to mix this together i'm fiddling around here to get a fork to mix it together and then when i get this cheese mixture done i'm just going to set it to the side until i'm ready to use it and i'll be right back i'm back and let me explain what i'm doing here this is a flour sack towel and it's a clean flour sack towel uh, i'm going to use this to make my phyllo dough sheets easier to handle uh, this is just a large clean piece of white cloth that's very thin i have wet it and i wrung it out really really well and i'm going to open one package of my phyllo dough and i see all kinds of phyllo dough in on tv and in videos but i don't have access to that really good phyllo dough this is very thin and very fragile and as i said in my teropita video i have made phyllo dough once I, I don't like anybody enough to do that again <laughs> it, it it was just really really difficult time consuming to make i know that there are all kinds of folks that make their own phyllo dough I'm never going to be one of them. Uh, but it is kind of hard to find in my area. I did find this at Publix. And it comes in a package with that's a pound. And each one of these little tubes is 8 ounces. And you'll use almost this whole thing for one Spanakopita. Now, you see these are very fragile, very thin. If you're touching them, they feel almost like paper. Well, in doing research, which means looking at something that most other people already know, um, I found that if you let them sit between two damp cloths, that they are easier to work with. They won't fall apart so badly. And um, so I thought I would try it. And sure enough, having this clean flour sack towel you can use paper towels if you'd prefer it really makes a difference in how the phyllo dough sheets handle they don't come apart so badly they don't feel so much like paper that's the problem by the way with using paper towels is you can get all confused and end up putting a piece of paper towel in your spanakopita i didn't want to do that so i have this clean flour sack towel so I'm just going to push this to the back and let it rehydrate a little bit while I prep the next step. Be right back. Our spinach mixture is ready. You can see how much it's reduced. I have a wire strainer set down inside a bowl because I'm going to strain all this, get as much liquid out of it as I can. See all that liquid down in the bottom? So I'm going to put this over, I'm going to put all of it over into this wire colander. And when I get it all over here, I'm going to kind of break it up a little bit more, which is why I said you don't really have to do a lot of chopping to start with. And I'm going to press the liquid out. And you really need to let this cool a little bit before you add it to the egg mixture, because you don't want scrambled eggs. While that's cooling a little, I am going to show you how we handle the phyllo dough, the phyllo sheets. I'm not going to show you all of it, but I'm going to use 20 of the sheets. And your package is going to have somewhere between 20 and 24, 25. Uh, I ended up with just a couple left. 
and you want to start with olive oil and this is just plain olive oil no garlic nothing added to it and we're gonna uh, brush the olive oil between most every layer and the reason I say most every layer instead of every layer is because as you're working with this sometimes you'll get two that are kind of stuck together or two that tear and you so you may put two in there together but you want to brush them with olive oil as many of them as you can I, I was able to do it on most of these another thing you may run into is my pan and the sheets are not exactly the same side size so as I layer the the phyllo sheets see I had some stuck there and I couldn't get it apart without tearing the whole sheets up so I'm just gonna lay it in there it won't matter but as I was saying if you if your pan and your sheets are not exactly the same size you may just sort of overlap them and offset them so that you end up getting several sheets on every area of the pan I know this looks rough but I promise you it's not gonna matter I have actually seen this made with just four on the bottom and four on the top but because the pans are not the same size and because they sometimes tear and that may just be the brand uh, of sheets that I have I use 10 and I'll put 10 on the top so we're going to use 20 all together so I'm going to do just a couple more just so that you can see why I say the rough spots don't matter because as you build it as you put more and more on everything gets covered and those black spots you see are where the dough is so thin you can see the pan through it or there's a tiny hole all of that doesn't matter because we're using 10 sheets it's all going to get covered now you don't have to put the oil all the way up the sides but when you get almost all 10 sheets in you'll start oiling the sides and that's so you can fold it down you get the gist of it here I'll be back when I'm ready for the next step so I have all 10 layers in and they are all oiled and ready to go and here is my spinach mixture and oh there's still steam coming off of it so it's still pretty hot and it's been sitting over there the whole time I was preparing the pan so I'm stirring it up to let it cool off a little bit and it's still hot but I think it's not going to scramble my eggs so I'll mix the cheese in you know you could make this spinach mixture ahead you could make it the day before and refrigerate it and that would be fine too but I'm just going to stir it up enough to cool it down a little bit more and then I'm going to add the cheese mixture to it and you can see there's a whole lot more cheese in here than there is spinach and I think that's what makes it just wonderful you have about three times as much cheese as you do spinach I'm gonna stir it pretty well in case there are some hot spots so I'm going to incorporate all the cheese in and I'll be back mm, just look at all that cheesy goodness so we're ready to put it all together uh, let me just mention very quickly yes you have a lot of leeway in choosing your cheese you can choose authentic Greek cheeses you can choose your favorite cheese you can use almost any cheese be careful of the saltiness and check that but the one thing that you absolutely should not do is use the little green box of Parmesan cheese it just does not mix well it just doesn't work in this dish and I don't think it works in any dish but even if you use it don't use it in this dish so we're gonna pour this cheesy yumminess 
into the pan on top of those 10 layers of wonderful crispy phyllo dough. This pan, by the way, is a 13 by 7 and a half. It's kind of an odd size. Um, if you have a smaller pan, like just a little cake pan, half of it, you can make this. And you want to, um, you can cut all of the ingredients in half. Just don't cut down on the pastry. I mean, the number of sheets. You can also make this into two of the smaller ones and stick one in the freezer. And then sometime later, whenever you want it, take it out and let it thaw just a little bit in the fridge and then bake it just like you do this one. So you can see I have folded down the sides and I'm going to start again with the 10 layers of phyllo sheets. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. No, you don't have to watch it. It got pretty boring by the time I put 20 sheets on. But I will show you the beginning and the end of this process. And I have to say that the longer the sheets stay in the damp flour sack towel or the paper towels, whichever you choose to use, the easier they get to work with. Next time I make one of these, I'll uh, put the sheets into the damp towel probably an hour before I start. I think that would work well. So I'm going to put the 10 sheets on and then I will be back. So it's all assembled. By the way, when I started putting the sheets on the top, I turned my oven on to preheat to 350 degrees. And now that I've got it together, there are a couple of things that we need to do to get it ready for the oven. The first thing is, you want to cut some slits and I'm not measuring these but this is sort of roughly uh, the size of a slice and generally most of the time when you have a Greek dish the slits are cut in a diamond shape I mean just picture baklava not always some people just cut long pieces but I'm I have a razor blade here and I'm just cutting through the top two or three layers, not all the way down. And no, that's not even, but that's fine. And then we want to spritz it with water or you can just dip your fingers into some water and sprinkle it across the top. I'm not sure why. I know that's traditional. I think it may be to help steam the top couple of layers. I have set my oven rack right in the center of the oven. So we're going to cook this for an hour at 350. And when it's done, I'll be back. While that's cooking, I want to share with you a gift that my guest brought. These are pot holders, and I think they're beautiful. They are made and sold by an organization called Orphan Aid Liberia. And they're nice and thick and colorful. I love them. So after an hour in the oven on the middle rack at 350, this is what you got. And this is just, it's beautiful. And it smells so good. And listen. You're going to want to serve this hot, but not so very hot so I'm gonna let it cool off 15 minutes will have to be enough because I think that's as long as I can wait well you know you can see I almost forgot to show you this shot I just started eating so just listen to this mm, 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 mm. this is so good you can see I already ate a piece it's cooled off enough to not hurt, but still be nice and warm. I know this was a lot of work. Once you get used to it, it's not that much work. And it's totally worth the effort. I hope you decide to try it. If you think you like Greek food, but you're not sure, 
this is a good place to start. Hope you try this recipe. Hope you love it as much as I do. And I hope to see you again tomorrow on Debbie's Back Porch.